If you're an aspiring food entrepreneur, I've got food for thought. You have resources and assistance you wouldn't believe. And I'm here to introduce you today to Jill Gifford. Now, she's with the Entrepreneurial Assistance Program at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. That's part of the Food Processing Center, which is a huge facility, serves the entire country as well as the Midwest. And it began in 1983 after we went through an agricultural crisis or recession, 1982. Jill, welcome to Next Biz Success. Thank you for having me. And I think it's so cool that this Food Processing Center emerged out of the ashes, like a phoenix rising from (laughs) the ashes. And now it's this fantastic facility serving not only, you know, large corporations, but then your division serving aspiring entrepreneurs, right? Absolutely. You're the program director over there at the Entrepreneurial Assistance Center. So it's it's a, you know, you're the person that uh, many, many, many people want to talk to when somebody says, gee, mommy, that's a great recipe. You should sell it in the grocery store. And Absolutely. you hear that feedback a lot and all of a sudden you start getting, how would I do that? We do, we do. And that's why in 1989 then we started the Food Entrepreneur Program at the Food Center to help those people in specific needs, which are different if you're starting a food business yes. compared to an existing company. Exactly. And and you serve the Nebraska area and the Midwest and the entire country, but really you focus on a lot of, you serve a lot of homegrown, local, come right out of the kitchen, Absolutely. aspiring entrepreneurs that have a great recipe. Right, right. Yeah. And the whole notion is to basically, it was inspired by the idea of taking raw materials in Nebraska, of course, we have a lot of great mm-hmm. commodity products, mm-hmm. and then adding value, right, by processing them right. one way or another. Right. Yeah. Do you Give us some examples real quick. I know that you've you got into the cookie business and all sure. kinds of things. What, what comes out of here? All kinds of all kinds of companies from saw we get lots of sauces, pasta sauces, Great. barbecue sauces, baked goods. We get a lot of meat products, especially beef being from Nebraska. Sure. And we get a lot of ethnic and regional projects from all around the country. Okay, great. Yeah. And what do you do for these people when they call you or contact you? What's what, what, what resources do you have to offer to them? Well, we certainly have our Food Entrepreneur Program, which is intended to take them from the decision-making point right up to having a final product that they can take to the marketplace. Okay. And wh- how long does that transformation or that process typically take? Is it two, three years or one year? What? Yeah, usually from the time they start the formal program, it's about one year before okay. they're ready with a product for the market. Okay. And, and, and to get from day one to day 365, how much money tip? Typically, does the average graduate of your program spend? Sure. Most companies tell us that they're spending at least $35,000 really? to get their business off the ground. Now, that would be in the first one year or maybe two, three years? Usually in the first one year, just to get all set up and ready to go, Okay. get everything developed, get packaging created, do all the legal things get that product ready to start introducing. Great, well that's so yeah. helpful to know in your business plan, so you got that number and yes. you can work on your financing and stuff. Yes. Would you like them to have kind of some financing lined up before they really enter deeply into the program? We do, we really, and we work with them to look at financing options, business planning options, so okay. that they have all that figured out before they start developing the company. Okay, now just quickly go through the key steps and then I'm gonna ask you what, what the hangups and the toughest things are, okay? Well, in real general terms, we start out doing development work of the product, getting it ready to manufacture. Then we move on to developing the packaging and so forth, developing Uh the company, legal things. We help them figure out what the costs are, what they need to charge for the product, then finally promotional tools to help them start actually selling it out in the marketplace. And then they're a professional food entrepreneur. And they have to get into the channel, right? They have to get in front of buyers. Right. Right. You even kind of help with that a little bit. We do. We help them pr- by preparing the right tools, depending on what market they want to go in, and we help them by even role playing so that they're really comfortable in selling their product. Man, that's so invaluable. Now, yeah. two, there are two different kinds of entrepreneurs. I, I, I'm going to step back from the process okay. for a minute. You know, there are the, I would call them the str- strategic entrepreneurs that kind of look at the marketplace, find what market segment or niche is underserved, mm-hmm. and then go off in the kitchen somewhere and, mm-hmm. and develop a product to serve that market. Mm-hmm. Then there are others that have a recipe, one thing that they mm-hmm. do and they love it and they have a passion about it. Which of those two kinds of entrepreneurs come and knock on your door? You know, they both come and knock on the door, but the majority would be the people that have a recipe, a family favorite, and everyone's telling them you've got to start selling this product. And so they get excited about learning how to do that. Like the pickled asparagus. Yes, yes, pickled (laughs) asparagus, and that's how that started. It's amazing. Yep. 
Now, is that, a, is that an exception to the rule, or are you graduating people that come out of the box? And uh, well, what's your batting average with these kinds of people who walk in and say, this is going to sound sure. crazy, but I, I pickle asparagus? We get, we get all kinds of ideas, you know, especially, you sure. know, from all around the country and people from dis different ethnic areas and ideas. And so we get lots of things we may not necessarily be familiar with, but we learn about. Sure. And, and the more you learn, and you have quite a tribe or, or consultants and subcontractors, people that you we pull do. into the process. We do. I mean, the whole food processing center has about 30 employees that are a mixture of food scientists and business consultants with all kinds of areas of expertise wow. so that we can provide complete assistance to anyone. Now, when I get into the program, I've gone through the seminar, I kind of know basically what I'm looking at. I've got my money, my business plans pulled together. What are the most tedious or the most difficult things to push through? Usually for an entrepreneur it's the first couple steps and one is the product development. Taking that home recipe and getting it ready to go into a manufacturing situation. There's a lot of things involved there and that takes time okay. to get a good product they're happy with. And then the next is probably the packaging development. Okay. There's a lot of regulations to follow and to get a really nice package that's going to help sell that product. Yeah, it's got a merchandise. It's that's got all right. the legal stuff correctly, you that's know, right. and then it's got to pop off that shelf. That's right. And those take some time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, when I get all the way down the road, you know, do most people are they doing a half a million a year? Are they doing a million? Are they doing I mean, do the numbers you know, can you generalize or not? You know, it just depends on the product and yeah. what they're doing. And everybody has their own idea of success. Yeah. There are some people that if they can make $20,000 a year and stay on their farm, that's successful. Sure. Others want to grow their company and hope a big corporation comes and buys them in 10 years. Oh. So it depends what their goals are from the beginning. Yeah. And you got to, once you get deep into it, you maybe you have to quit your job. Mm -hmm. And really dedicate your time to getting out there on the street and selling. Right. right. And I think you told me before that a lot of them, if they're they're pro they have to kind of deliver them yourself. Maybe in five or six o'clock in the morning, you're going to bring your new product, right? Right. Many to the shelf or whatever. Exactly. And many companies do what's called direct store delivery, which means they're going to be taking it to the stores initially until they get enough volume that they can look at distribution centers. Wow, that's a yeah. that's quite a challenge. It's exciting though. I can see it now. I can see it <laughs> happening. I so appreciate you sharing your insight Thank with you. us. You've done a fantastic job here with the entrepreneurial program a part of the Food Processing Center yes. at UNL here in Lincoln, Nebraska. This is Next Biz Success. My name is Lynn Hinderocker. We've been talking to Jill Gifford and she has her hands in a lot of stew. You know what I'm saying? A lot of recipes, a lot of successful opportunities, and she can help you no matter how modest. If you're in the kitchen right now wondering, I wonder if I could make some money on that recipe. Believe me, she can help you out. Keep on going. Keep on growing. Thanks very much.